Fire Emblem is a series that was pretty much unknown to North American gamers until Marth and Roy joined the Super Smash Bros. roster. Since then, Western audiences have fallen in love with the characters and their stories just as much as Japanese fans, which can be seen in the relatively equal game sales across continents. This boost in popularity brought in a huge number of new Fire Emblem fans, which brings us to Fates, the Fire Emblem game which has something for both the hardcore fans and the first-timers. But if you're wondering which version to play through first, or if Fire Emblem is something you'd enjoy in general, by the end of this review I'm sure you'll have all of the answers. Regardless of which version of Fire Emblem Fates that you purchased, the game starts with a cinematic and then a battle which occurs 6 chapters later in the game when you finally choose your side, so it can be kind of confusing. But then your character wakes up and you realize you were just dreaming. Instantly you're thrown into a training session and it's very clear how ruthless the people of Nor are. They train like Spartans and they're unafraid of hurting their own in the process of making them stronger. Shortly after, the king starts sending you on missions and it's quite clear he has ulterior motives. These tasks are essentially suicide missions and it starts to feel like your king is hoping you don't return alive. Even your siblings are quick to attack you if you disobey orders, so it's really a hardcore depressing atmosphere to be around. The Hoshido Kingdom on the other hand is the polar opposite. In chapter 4 you're captured by Hoshidans and your first thought is that you're going to be taken back to their castle and executed. Fortunately for you, the Hoshidan people only took you in as a prisoner so that they could introduce you to your biological family and give you a tour of the kingdom. It seems like anyone in their right mind would choose to side with Hoshido. They're kind, loving, generous people who really just want to live in peace. Norians, in contrast, are an aggressive, violent people who seem to love asserting their power through war. If that wasn't enough, the king keeps sending you on what should be suicide missions and even tries to use you as a bomb. So why would anyone choose the conquest path and fight for the kingdom of Nor? Even your own character would rather talk things out than fight and prefers peaceful solutions over violent ones. This is just one of the reasons I'd recommend playing Birthright before Conquest, but let's talk about how the gameplay differs between the two. Fire Emblem Fates is split into two separate stories, Birthright and Conquest, with a third DLC path called Revelation, which is the big conclusion to the story. Some people compare the split stories to the Pokemon model, however it's not like that at all. Between Pokemon versions in the same generation, the story is essentially identical and the only differences are the Pokemon you run into along the way. Fire Emblem Birthright and Conquest, however, are two completely different stories. If you choose to play Birthright, you side with the Hoshida Nation, your biological family, in a campaign that's generally easier. There are opportunities to earn extra in-game gold and character experience which in turn allow you to buy more weapons and items and have characters at higher levels. There are also more Master Seals to collect which can be used to upgrade your characters in significant ways. If you choose to play Conquest, however, you side with the Nor Kingdom, your adoptive family, in an adventure that's generally more difficult. There aren't any extra opportunities to rack up gold and level up your characters, so every choice during a battle is extremely important. If certain characters don't get enough experience throughout your early missions, you might find them relatively useless later in the game when your enemies are much stronger. In general, the enemies in Conquest are just more aggressive and powerful than those in Birthright. However, there are still multiple difficulty settings for those who are just starting out or for players with lots of Fire Emblem experience. You can also choose whether or not your fallen units will respawn. Most diehard Fire Emblem fans play with the respawn mechanic off, allowing them to fully experience the game as the hardcore decision-making turn-based war RPG that it is. If you make a bad choice which ends up with one of your characters dying and they just respawn right after, it kind of defeats the whole idea of a war RPG. But the option to change the settings can kind of balance out the difficulty spike in Conquest that Birthright doesn't have. You can play Conquest on the easiest settings with Phoenix Mode on, so that even if your character dies in battle, you can still continue to fight with them and gain experience the following turns. On the contrary, you can also choose to play Birthright on the hardest difficulty settings and ignore the optional quest to avoid extra golden experience points. Despite the difficulty customization though, I highly recommend playing Birthright first, and then Conquest, and then of course, Revelation. But let's talk about how the game actually plays. To players who may not be familiar with the Fire Emblem franchise or just turn-based strategy games in general, the lack of exploring during this so-called adventure might be a turn-off. However, with this genre of games, it's more so about the rich story, character interactions, and skillful decision-making rather than walking around and sightseeing. Fire Emblem Fates brings you through cutscenes and dialogue that really set the tone before and after each battle. While you do have the option to skip through everything, you don't really get any of the story if you do. 
The cinematics are very well done, and even though I've already played through the first six chapters multiple times the past two weeks, I still find myself captivated by each cutscene and really enjoy watching them. In addition to that, the music throughout the game seems almost perfect in every dialogue and fight, changing with the moods of conversation and the outcomes of battle. Speaking of battles, the way that they're presented is just phenomenal. The environments are very well done and even change on a single map depending on where two characters start a fight. In addition to this, the player is given four different perspectives to view the battle from. There's a first person view, a third person view, a 2D fighter type angle, and a cinematic perspective where the camera is constantly panning. You can also move the camera manually with the circle pad in any of the four modes as well as slow down, speed up, zoom in, zoom out, and pause the battle. With so many options, you can really make each fight look and feel exactly how you want it to, and really enjoy the awesome moments that occur. But aesthetics aside, the mechanics within the battle are what really makes Fire Emblem the top tier turn-based strategy game that it is. With a wide variety of character classes and weapons, you really have to plan out each battle carefully. Certain classes can travel further than others each turn, and certain weapons can attack from a distance and can even be super effective against other weapons and classes. The first thing to note is the weapon triangle, which is essentially rock, paper, scissors. Each weapon has its own color. Blue is effective against red, red is effective against green, and green is effective against blue. Each character has certain skills as well, which are little bonuses they get on the battlefield. It's important to keep all of this in mind when planning out which direction to send each unit, and which enemies they're going to instigate. But you don't have to send your troops in solo. Some characters have skills that allow you to shelter other players, but you can also choose to pair up with a character just by moving beside them. This allows you to just move one character instead of both of them, and can help slower characters cover more ground. But the real benefit of supporting another character is the bonuses you get during battles. Fighting together also creates bonds between characters, and the more they fight together, the stronger their relationship grows and the better they'll perform. And you can even have characters fight together just by positioning them beside one another. Support characters can increase the strength of your attack, the chance that it will hit, the chance that you'll avoid the enemy's attack, and a variety of other stats. They can be extremely clutch and save a character from dying, or even get in that last bit of damage you need to finish them off. You can see at the bottom of the lower screen which characters have bonds using the simplified user interface, and use that information to help plan out your strategy. The lower screen actually has a ton of useful information, and I highly recommend tapping around and learning what everything does. The simplified and complex user interfaces both have unique bits of info that the other does not, so it might be helpful to switch between them in certain scenarios rather than sticking to one the entire time. But when it comes to completing missions, Conquest offers different objectives and challenges to complete rather than just the defeat all enemies route that Birthright seems to take. While Conquest doesn't offer additional opportunities to gain experience and gold, you can still get as much as possible from each mission if you want. For example, if the objective is to claim a certain area or defeat a specific enemy, you can choose to avoid that objective until you defeated all the other enemies. This will allow you to level up your characters as much as possible, which is extremely important when playing Conquest. It's also important to make sure that your characters with healing powers get experience to level up as well. Even if you're running through enemies with ease, be sure to use their powers a lot to level them up. Unfortunately, bad RNG is always a possibility when it comes to the stats that get increased with every level, so if you're a hardcore strategist who wants their characters to level up in specific ways, you might have to redo missions over and over until you get the stat increases that you want when leveling up. But let's take a break from all the intense strategy that goes into Fire Emblem Fates, and let's talk about some of the additional features within the game. Being a solo adventure type of series, you really can't expect much in terms of multiplayer when it comes to Fire Emblem. However, like the barracks feature in Awakening, Fates introduces the My Castle area. This part of the game exists on the astral plane that Lilith takes you to in Chapter 3 to save you from falling into the bottomless pit. Her shrine is also located in the My Castle area, and giving her food will level her up, and after every three levels she'll give you a gold bar. Using the Dragon Vein points that you rack up from in-game missions and visiting other castles, you can also build all sorts of structures like weapon shops, a mess hall, and even a prison to hold captured units from battles. Which brings us to the actual multiplayer portion of the game. Whenever you pass another player with a copy of Fates and Street Pass activated, you receive a visitor avatar of them. You can then visit their castle and use their shops in other buildings, collect food and other resources, or even challenge them to a battle. Each player's army is made up of the characters they've unlocked in their solo adventures, and you can position their guard and attack stances to some extent. Unfortunately, however, the battles are not live for each player, so you're playing against AI or computer-controlled characters when attacking other castles, and vice versa. 
so you could be extremely skilled at strategy games like Fire Emblem, but still have your army lose to a noob because the AI controls them and not you. There also isn't too much customization when it comes to your castle's appearance. You can choose between three different castle styles, and there's a decent selection of music to have playing in your castle, but overall it still feels very limited and not very creative. After visiting a few other castles, they all start to look the same, regardless of the style or building placement. Winning a My Castle battle allows the player to either recruit an enemy unit used in battle, or purchase a skill on that unit, including Rootlock story characters like Takumi and Leo. You can also work on your inter-character relationships in the My Castle area by having your troops engage in support conversations. If that isn't enough, and you still want to work on a bond between two characters, you can also invite them into your private quarters. Later in the game, if you have a spouse, you'll always find them in your quarters and have some interesting interactions specifically with them. And if you still want to be all buddy-buddy with the Fire Emblem characters, you can scan in your Smash Brothers amiibo into the My Castle area. Here you can talk to them and hear interesting stories about their battles with others from all over the world, launching them and getting launched <coughs> Smash Brothers, and they'll even give you gifts. After the third time scanning your Fire Emblem amiibo, you'll be able to challenge them to a battle. If you win, they'll join your My Castle army and help you defend from Street Pass invasions. It really seems like the developers tried their best to add interesting and fun multiplayer features into a game whose genre is usually all about the hardcore single player strategy, which is really awesome to see. Overall, I think Fire Emblem Fates is an amazing collection of games. Some people might think that the multiple game idea is just a lame money grab, but each version of Fates is its own complete and unique story. Even the free DLC Before Awakening is a fun little spin-off completely different from the main campaign, so it's clear that the developers have made huge efforts to put all sorts of engaging content into these games. Because of the difficulty level and, I suppose, the harsh storyline of Conquest, I would highly recommend playing through Birthright first if you have the chance or if you're new to the Fire Emblem series in general. I will admit that Conquest is the first Fire Emblem game I've played in the series, but it definitely won't be the last. Being a complete noob, the difficulty of some of the missions had me pretty discouraged, but if you experiment and try different strategies, you'll start to get the hang of things and have a ton of fun. The story is also extremely deep regardless of which branch of fate you choose, and because of this I'll definitely be playing through the new maps and revelation once they're released. While there's enormous amount of dialogue and cinematic scenes, they've really allowed the player to connect with the characters and really feel the emotion of the story. Multiplayer-wise, the game feels slightly lacking, but with a turn-based strategy game like this, the focal point is supposed to be the solo campaign anyways. So, I think the effort put into the Fates multiplayer is astounding, and really makes me happy that they went to the lengths that they did. So, let's score this bad boy. Sights and sounds, 9. Solo gameplay, 9. Customization, 7. Multiplayer, 7. And replay value, 9. DLC, definitely worth buying. Final score, 40 out of 50 or 80%. If you like this review, let me know which games you'd like to see me review in the future. Pokémon Tournament, Legend of Zelda, whatever you're interested in, just let me know. To check out some of my usual content, just click either of the videos on your screen. The top one takes you to my How To Smash series, a guide that teaches you the essentials that apply to every single Smash game in the series. Or you can click the bottom video which takes you to my Top 5 Best and Worst series. If you're not subscribed yet and love Super Smash Bros. and Nintendo in general, click that sub button and you will not be disappointed. I'm EMG Smash Central, thanks for watching all the way until the end, and happy smashing!